The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has confirmed four new cases of coronavirus COVID-19. The total of confirmed cases is now 40. Dr. Chikwe Ihekwazu, Director General of NCDC, confirmed this in Abuja while giving an update on COVID-19 cases in the country. Ihekwazu said that the three new COVID-19 cases were reported in Lagos, one in the capital, Federal Capital Territory. He said that two from the four new cases were returning travellers. As at 11 p.m. on March 23, there were 40 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria. The active cases is 37. Two have been discharged with one death recorded in the country. Of the 40 confirmed cases, 28 are in Lagos, 7 in the FCT, 2 in Edo, 1 in Ekiti and 1 in Oyo. Inhekwazu said that as the COVID-19 situation in Nigeria evolves, the NCDC government agencies will take the necessary measures to protect the health of Nigerians. Joining us via video call is Dr. Uche Okorocha. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. The NCDC has confirmed new cases of COVID-19, bringing the total number of confirmed cases to 40. How do you react to this? Okay, so how do I react to the fact that today we have 40 confirmed cases in Nigeria? I would say not unexpected. Um, there was a build up to this. Uh, so it just wakes everybody up, right? Everybody should wake up and realize that this thing is here. Uh, we can't wish it away. And so we need to do whatever we can to stop the spread. There is also federal government directives on all civil servants between grade level 12 and below to stay and work from home. You think this should be extended to other sectors of the economy? At this stage, I would say not a total complete shutdown. Um, there are people who have to be up and about um, doing what they have to do. For example, I had to leave my home to be here in your studio for us to have this conversation. So I think it's a step in the right direction to have most people stay at home. Um, if people don't move, the virus doesn't move. Then what extra measures do you think people should at least take to ensure that we could till further spread of the virus? Okay, so as I said at the beginning, let's all realize that we can't wish this thing away. It's really here um, and then it kills, okay? Um, so if you understand the principles, if you understand the way it's transmitted, uh, then it becomes easy to figure out what you should do or what you should not do. Uh, it becomes easy to remember what you've been told and why you were told to do ABC and not to do something else. So I'll just say one, social distancing is so important. Uh, it's not because we don't want people to be close to one another. It's because we don't want this thing to spread. Uh, personal hygiene, washing of your hands regularly with soap and water, or the use of hand sanitizers uh, when you don't have the opportunity to immediately wash your hands. And then um, consciously, consciously avoid touching your face. That would be very helpful. Prior to this time, uh, there were words by people that uh, the trend is not akin to a black man, but we've seen recent cases, even debt recorded um, as of yesterday by um, Nigeria. Do you want to enlighten people on this? Okay, so th this virus does not respect anybody, it does not respect um, the color of your skin, it does not respect uh, your socioeconomic status. Um, anybody can get infected. So uh, I think people just tend to think, well, it can't be me, or they um, listen to some sensational stuff that's flying around on social media that they find convenient just because people want to deny the possibility that it could get to them. This is real, and then nobody's exempted. Well, still on the issue of distancing, uh, we do have people in workplaces who have to commute through uh, public buses. How well can the situation um, be managed with our public system? 
Okay, so th that's a difficult one, I have to admit. Um, because there are things that can be done to regulate how many people actually are in a particular bus or car, for sure. But how are you able to enforce those things at this time? Um, that's not realistic. Um, but at some point, look, let's all bear in mind, this is not a normal time. We cannot you know, look for a way to continue to do things normally. We have to just, first of all, settle it in our minds that this is not a normal time. Okay, so if it means not going to work at all, that's not convenient, that has consequences, but that's what will keep us safe. So uh, are they going to restrict uh, public transportation? That has happened in a lot of places. When there is a lockdown, there is a lockdown. Everybody stays at home. They can advise people, educate people, maybe even um, make it illegal to carry overload and all of that. But are we able to enforce that at this time? So basically, at some point, I think we might need a lockdown. We know that South Africa has a nationwide lockdown for 21 days from midnight on Thursday to curtail the spread of the virus. Do you see us doing this anytime soon? It's not about tending towards it. So, so this outbreak has phases. Uh, we're at a phase that um, this is a phase where the next minute you hear about many more cases and many more cases until we get to a peak. Now this peak means that that's the highest number before it begins to come down. Um, whatever that peak is depends on how well we respond. So are we tending towards a lockdown? Are there triggers that should tell us that right now we should be thinking about locking down? Absolutely. We should be doing that right now. If uh, And then this is basically a call to those in authority to seriously consider a lockdown. As I said, it's not convenient but it produces results. Many have argued the fact that the federal government seems to be doing enough to curtail the spread of this virus. Would you say that's the case? Um, okay, look, this thing came up on us and then no nation on earth, even the ones with the strongest economy, the strongest healthcare systems, no nation is fully prepared. No nation has all it takes to respond effectively to this. In Nigeria, I can tell you that the authorities are doing a whole lot and uh, I will commend their efforts so far, uh, but there's always room for improvement. But more important than asking them to do better, I would like to just call upon the private sector. I would call on, I'd like to call on business leaders across the country to form a coalition of all different coalitions that different places because look even in the United States the businesses got together and then um, they are offering to support the government efforts in one way or another I am asking business leaders I am asking the private sector to come together and support the efforts of the government we're all in this together we'll have to solve it together thank you very much for your thoughts thank you for having me